Hi, this is Marianne Susi from HealingPeddlers.com. In this video, I will talk about some of the ways that our pets teach us. And that can be, for instance, the positive qualities that our pets have when they are alive. It can be challenging qualities that our pets have that you can learn something about in your own life. And there are challenging or positive situations that you can learn from regarding your pets. So um, I'll just give you some examples. And by the way, besides these things, obviously there's also communication with your pet. For instance, sacred spirit journeys, two-letter writing technique or other animal communication techniques. But we won't deal with that here right now. It is mainly the pet's qualities and situations that you can learn a lot from. And I'll give you some examples. For instance, the pet's positive qualities. We learned a lot from our cat, Pity Puts, who lived in a park before we got him home. And he was very trusting. He knew who to approach, who not to approach. And his main message was live in faith. And that message has followed us for a long time and is a very important part of our life now and in our connection with him. He was an amazing teacher just by the way he lived his life. He taught us. So we can now just think of his life, the way he interacted with us, the way he lived. That is a powerful model, a powerful example for us to incorporate more of that living in faith that he had. Another one was Sam, our angel cat Sam. He was full of joy and determination. And that joy he brought is something that it's also a very important and significant lesson for us and part of our life because he was um, he, a homeless cat. He came from a long time, a long um, way from where we live. We found out afterwards that he had been like 40 kilometers from where we are is where he was last seen. And so he traveled all this way to come to us. And then there is um, Limdap, our angel cat Limdap. She was a very trusting cat. She would be the first to, if we had like a plumber or electrician coming, whereas most of the others would either stay where they are or hide and not come out till a long time after they had left. She would just walk right up to them and say hi. And she also had that inner peace, like meditative inner peace quality that is so rare to find in your own life. And she was a, an amazing example and role model for us, a teacher for us in that regard. That was just a couple of examples of the positive qualities our pets can have. And you can look into, look at your own pets and see what qualities they have. Then there are the more uh, challenging qualities. Sometimes they mirror our own, something in ourselves that we need to deal with, or they teach us how to handle those situations where those qualities are present. For instance, our cat Kia, she was full of love, but she was nervous around strangers, so she had a lot of fear in that regard. And she also inspired me to look at my own fears and has also been a great teacher in that area for me. And then there's our cat Starlight. He's a cat who knows what he wants. He can be a bit aggressive if he is one of his moods, but Fortunately, at some point, it, it got better when we found out that some of it was related to some tooth problems he had. 
that were taken care of where he got much better. But what I noticed in myself was when I stopped being irritated about the aggression and when I completely changed my behavior with him and came from a much more open and soft and understanding way, he's like one of the most amazing, gentle and loving cats when you just know how to handle him. And in that way, he, the cats and the animals, um, they teach us and we have to face some of our own issues and just keep working on them. And our animals are such amazing teachers because they love us and they love us unconditionally, but sometimes they also mirror some of our own issues. But it's definitely some of the best teachers I have had. And then we have um, situations can also be great teaching pos um, examples or possibilities for us. For instance, there was a period some years ago where a cat we called Otto from one of our neighbors, um, uh, not right nearby, but uh, by way far away from where we were, he would go for long walks and he would um, end up in our place one day and he was so amazing. He was confident, he was trusting, he just came right in through the cat door and was like, okay, I'm here. And he was unfazed by all the other cats that were. And if somebody came too close, he would just turn around and pop, give them, we're not aggressive, just put them in place. And when I remember when he was running through the garden, it would look like he was floating. It was just the most amazing view I can never forget. But then one day they, they moved away, so we never saw him again. And he had a very powerful presence that we definitely miss very much. And then there's also um, challenging the situation was there was a grey cat that was in bad shape that came out of our place and came in through the cat door but was in such desperate shape that when he came in and saw some of the others who just completely go berserk, completely um, like climbing the walls. And it was the first time it happened to us. So we panicked, we, we took on his panic, so we let him out again. But of course, that was, um, that was a mistake that we made. We realized that immediately afterwards, because we were probably his last resort and we let him out again. So right there and right then we decided, well, we're not gonna let that happen. And we made a plan for if it happened again, what we would do. And that turned out to be very, very good and very important that we had been through that and learned that lesson because with our current cat, Oscar, that's what happened. He came in through the cat door and he was extremely skinny and he was very fearful. He was also climbing the walls. But even though it was extremely difficult, we made sure not to let him out, but we put him in a safe room by himself where in the beginning he was like a ghost kitty. I would go down to him, I would feed him, even though he wouldn't the first days come out or say, say anything, but he would eat and he would use the litter box. And then I would start singing to him and I've been singing to him ever since and he's singing back to me in his own way. And he is like a shadow, so he is following me everywhere I go. He's the most amazing loving kitty. and. He had definitely used his very last courage and strength to ask for help. And fortunately, we had learned from what happened last time, so we were able to, to save him. And he was like in a journey I did for him. He said he was led here, not just guided, but led here. And there's no doubt that that there was a purpose that he was led here. There's no doubt about that. And 
in the um, and there is um, also an example of uh, another situation with little black kitten that I had for one summer when I was like, I don't know, 10, 12 years old. I mentioned the story in my book, Killing Pet Loss. That I would, we had like a back garden in our the apartment building we had, a garden that I loved to be in. And there was a little black kitten that would I would connect with and get very close to and every day I come, came home from school the, the kitten was there and I spent time with the kitten and it was I got very close to that little and my parents and my grandmother who had the place they knew all about that and but then suddenly suddenly one day it was gone when I came home from school there was no cat no nothing and then I I heard that well, the story I got was, well, there was a furniture guy that, that had a, um, a, a shop in the building. And he knew somebody who had a farm and they had taken it to that farm. And that was like totally traumatizing for me. And first of all, I can't see why the cat couldn't have been there and I would take care of it. Second, if they absolutely didn't want the cat there, couldn't they at least have had the decency to let me say goodbye to it? How can you do that? And even though I was not very old at that time, I had made a decision that I would never ever ever be like that. I would not only take care of cats, but I would never just remove them from someone like that, like they had done for me. And then years later, it turned out it was not even by, by choice. And then suddenly we we end up meeting some cats that need rescue and then we have been taking care of them ever since all the cats we have have been rescue cat cats that have basically many of them um, just walked into our home and they had no home and we checked up but there was they didn't belong to anybody they were abandoned or whatever might be their story. So you can see there are many different ways that our pets teach us when they are alive and also after they are alive, but that's a different story. You can look at your own animals, both those that are alive, the ones that you have had, and try and determine if there are some special situations that have the potential to teach you a lot or special qualities that your pet has or had. And I know there are many more situations you could take, especially when it comes to, for instance, the pet's last day about going to the vet and if you handle it right, but there's not really time for, for that. That's a big, also a big topic. But it should be enough to get you started to look into it and um, also the topic of um, pets as teachers is an important part of my new book um, healing pet loss guilt that is available now on amazon and wherever else you buy a book that can really help it's something i found from my own life that Learning without blaming, without going into any kind of blaming mode, but really in keeping an open mind and heart and see where you can improve. What can you learn from what your pet, how they have been, what they taught you and what the situation maybe during life, but also during the last time you spent with them. Look at it without blaming yourself for anyone, but simply how can I learn from this not just to grow as a human being but also to honor my pet so i hope this could inspire you and you are welcome to share your your stories your insights in the comments below blessings